Hi, my name is Nick. I'm from ETC New York, and I'm going to talk to you today about the new 2.2 features for the EOS family of consoles. The first set that we have to get into is displays and navigation, so let's hop right in. In the new EOS 2.2 family software, we introduce a lot of display controls that allow you to customize the layout of all of your screens. You'll notice the first thing is an add tab button similar to your favorite internet browser. Simply touch that button and you get a menu that allows you to pick the layout of the screen, any of the displays, and any of the controls that you'd like. The displays are still accessible by double hitting keys on the keypad and the controls are replacing the ones that used to be in the browser. To get a layout that you like, simply pick a layout and select the individual displays that you want in each frame. Once you've chosen your layout for your displays, you have the ability in each frame to add more tabs. Simply add the Add Tab button and pick the individual tabs that you want in each display. Just like before, navigating the tabs is as easy as touching them or pressing Tab and typing the number. You'll notice that we've gone to a fixed tab system so that every time you want to address a particular tab, such as effects, it's always the same tab number. We also give you additional tab tools to help you customize the layout of each frame. When you touch the gear, you get a menu that allows you to close an individual tab, replace that tab with an additional display, close all the tabs with the active one, close all the tabs to reset that frame, or lock the frame. When you lock the frame, you're not able to bring any other displays into that frame. You can also change other aspects of your display by going into the display control icon on any of the monitors. You can choose a different layout or you can reset all of your monitors, reset this individual monitor, clear this individual monitor, or by touching the icon with the arrows, you can resize all of your frames. Simply hold and drag or click and drag your individual handles and you can customize the framing. Clicking or touching off of them will allow you to deselect. EOS 2.2 also introduces the idea of workspaces. Workspaces allow you to individually set up your screen, both on internal and external monitors, and quickly access up to three individual spaces quickly and easily. This allows you to create task-specific screens and toggle between them with ease. You can do this on each individual monitor or all monitors by holding tab, page up, or page down. In addition to giving you a lot of great layout tools for your screens, EOS 2.2 also allows you to save those into a snapshot and open them on any other screen on your device or anywhere across the network. Simply grab your display controls on the top of any monitor screen and add a new snapshot. When that snapshot exists in the browser, you're able to recall that on any monitor, either external or internal to the console or anywhere on your network, so a designer can pull up a snapshot on an RVI that you've created on your console. To recall one, simply go into the display controls on that monitor and touch that snapshot. And just like that, your monitors are duplicated. The final thing I want to show you in the EOS 2.2 displays is our new Direct Select module. In addition to the ones that you're already used to using, we added this one to give you the ability to add as many or as few in blocks of 25 as you'd like. To add more tiles, simply hit the plus 25 button and the direct selects fill your screen. To subtract them, hit the minus 25, and the direct selects compress. You can add as many or as few as you want in order to get to a space that's comfortable for you to program. Let's take a look at channel distribution tools now. The offset tool, which has existed for a long time in EOS Family Software, now has a bunch of functionality added to it as well. So if I grab a range of channels and put offset on the command line, I now get my CIA populated with a whole bunch of different tools to change the order in which these channels run. Uh, I also keep a live display up here. So as I change them, this channels display is gonna show my subgroupings uh, as I change things. So in the direction column, you get reverse, which changes them from forward to backward to backward to forward. You have the ability to mirror them in, which allows the channels to come from the outside in toward the center of the selection. You can mirror them out, which is the reverse, or you can randomly group them, which will randomly assign an order to them. Under the grouping heading, you can select the number of channels you want in each group. If I say four channels per group, it's going to break them up every fourth channel in the order in which I selected them. If instead I want to put my number of groups, I can simply touch that and say six, 
and it will divide that selection into six even groups. By using interleave as a modifier to either of these group selections, it allows you to weave the different groups together to create a completely different channel selection. Another modifier to channels per group or number of groups is your jump. Jump allows you to define how many channels you'll skip in between each group selection. Also using the spacing command, you can select just the odd channels, just the even channels. When you reorder a group, it simply takes all of the channels that may have been discombobulated and puts them in numerical order. These offset tools can get quite intricate. So if at any time you're confused about what's being stored, check out your dynamic group display line. that will show you exactly what's happening. In addition, once you've created something that you like, you can simply record that as a group and recall it at any time. And the last thing we're going to look at today is channel level overrides for effects. So just like you were able to do queue level overrides in previous versions of EO software, you now have more granularity to go in and change all your effect parameters on a channel by channel basis. So first, I'm going to grab channels, put them at full, and I'm going to run effect 901, which is just a circle effect. Uh, what I get on my effect display is each channel running in the effect. So with that open, I can grab individual or groups of channels and modify those parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and say 210 through 213. And I'm going to put their rate by touching the soft key at 200. Uh, you'll notice that in my standard effect status display in my CIA, my rate now gets a plus to it. And that's telling me that there are channels in this that aren't following the displayed value of 100, just like other portions of your console. Uh, the other thing that you can do is grab a channel and roll it on the encoder wheel. And that gives you that ability to change it more fluidly than typing in a value. Thanks for joining me for our brief overview of the EOS Family 2.2 software. If you want complete information, please check out the supplement that comes with the software, or go to www.etcconnect.com and check out our user forums and all of our product pages. Thanks. Catch you on the next one.